Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Lava Lava, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of the vibrant people and cultures of the Pacific Islands. I am your host, Michael Tan. But before we get started, a quick reminder to our listeners to follow, subscribe, and leave a review if you enjoy the show. Now let's jump straight into it. Today we will be talking with Chris Helene of the Utah Islanders. Talofa, Chris. Hello. Chris, uh, could you tell me of the origins of the Utah Islanders? Well, um, I got involved in the, into semi-pro football a few years ago, and I found it to be very unorganized and very unprofessional. And <clears throat> when me and my business partner weren't getting along, or we weren't really seeing eye to eye much more on the direction of the team. I had to make some decisions, you know, to run a football team is very expensive. It's very, very time consuming. And one of the things that was so important to me in the game of football is that to wear that jersey and to wear that helmet, to wear that sticker on the side of that helmet was a badge of honor. And that's not what was being represented in the, in the game of football that I was getting back to. And, you know, when I was going through the, whether or not I wanted to continue doing the football thing, I... I had to take a hard look and I, I was talking to a, my friend, Will Kofi with OFA. And I asked him, I said, if you had a football team, what would you name it? And he wrote me back and he said, well, what would you want that team to say about you when they play you? And last year, the first game that we had was a, our API heritage game. And the weather was horrible. And but the Pacific Islanders came out in droves. We probably had between three and four thousand fans. Flags were flying all over the place, you know, and it was really special. And I remember looking back at my wife and I'm like, this is this is what we want. And that made me reflect back to that. And then I wrote Miss I wrote Will back after a couple of weeks and I was like, you know what? I said, it's not what I want them to say about us as much as I want them to feel us. I want them to feel the love and the pride for this team. I want them to feel like they're playing an army when they're, when they step into our arena. And then next thing, you know, it really brought me back to that game. And I reached out to some of our Pacific Islander players and I said, look, I said, I'm going to go my own direction. And I said, with all the research that I've done, we have the second largest Pacific Islander population in the United States behind Honolulu. And one of the things that has always kind of bothered me is that there's a lot of teams out there that, show honor and they show respect to the Pacific Islanders, but nothing represented them. And when I, when I was speaking with them, I said, you know, this is something that because of you guys, I fell in love with the culture, the family, the, you know, everything that you guys represent was something that I knew that I wanted for me to continue to invest my money and my time into this football program. And so after I got their permission, because I'm, white. You know, I, I felt that I had to get permission and I, because I know that I'm a guest in the house. And so after I got my players permission, then I went to some other elders in the community and I asked them for their permission and I let them know why I wanted to do it. And that I'm doing this to give a culture and a group of people that I have tremendous respect for something that represents them. Because I know that in order to build this team to success, we have got to have a community support. And with the love and the, and how giving that the community is, I knew that the community would never let us fail. And after I was able to receive enough blessings from it, then, you know, and I had, you know, people, I had all sorts of debates back and forth. They were, you know, you don't need to name it the Islanders. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. But when it was all said and done, my heart said, we need something that represents the people. And, um, and that's why I made the decision to to move forward with this. Now, I want to take it um, back a little. Can you talk yeah. about your background? Um, what what do you yeah. do full time? Or if you're doing the, the Utah Islanders full time now, what were you doing before? So a little bit about your background and where you're from. So I am I have been in the automotive industry since uh, I quit playing football. I moved down here to play football at Dixie and got injured um, right away dislocated my elbow again. And, and then for me, it was like, I didn't like school. You know, it wasn't my thing. I only wanted to go to school to play football. And so, and then I've just always believed that if you follow your passion, 
you're going to be able to be successful in some way. And so my next passion was cars because there was nothing in football left. And so I pursued cars and thank God for cars. My passion followed me. And then, you know, it finally put me in a position to where I was able to have the time and the freedom and the financial ability to um, get involved in football. You know, and I actually got into football, not being in football for 25 years. And I had a business deal go bad. And I thought it was because I wasn't communicating properly. And so I felt like I needed to work on my communication. So then I started taking these classes and trying to learn how to communicate better. And I'm like, this ain't for me either. I said so. And then I just had the thought, I was like, if I'm going to, in order for me to do this, I said, I think I got to get into football. I got to get into coaching because I'm going to have to be able to tell a player what I want and they're going to have to give it to me. If they do not give me what I want, I'm going to have to learn how to tell them what I want until they give me what I want. And so that's how I got back into the game of football. Um, And, you know, and really I started off as a intern uh, for a team called the Salt Lake Senate and, you know, and just very quickly, I could learn that semi-pro football was not was not the thing. But what I did is I saw enough from players that were still fighting for a dream to, to continue to try to fight to go to college, to fight to go to the pros, that I was like, there's something here. And I said, if we can just clean this up and make this something that can be high elite football, we're going to be fine. And then I knew that this was going to be the direction. So, you know, really it was my love of cars that allowed me the opportunity for it to be full circle for me to be, get back to my first true love. And that's the game of football at American United. We help when others won't. If you're in Utah and need a second chance at banking, they've got your back. They offer everything from business to personal banking, to online services, credit, coaching, and financial mentoring. And they do it all with lower fees, higher dividends and exclusive member rewards. American United takes pride in helping their members succeed. Whether you need an auto loan, a credit card, or a retirement account, they have the perfect fit for your lifestyle. Plus, they show their appreciation for our veterans with special VA programs for those who have served in the U.S. military. And here's something really special. American United is the proud title sponsor of the annual Pacific Island Veterans Day Dinner Gala, demonstrating their commitment to our community and our heroes. So whether you're buying your first house or planning your retirement, let American United Federal Credit Union be there for you. They're all about celebrating life's achievements, big and small. Remember, we help when others won't. Visit amucu.org to learn more and become a member today. Now, thank you for sharing. Now, you spoke about respect, and I'm sure that a lot of people, especially within your circle and your community, community they really appreciate you for approaching them and asking for their basically asking for their blessing to to start the utah islanders and and yes. in the fasamoa and a lot of pacific island culture respect is a foundation of you know of our cultures and 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 that's amazing that you took the time and you 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 realized that you know, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't born in this culture, but I want to learn and I want to make an impact. And, and, and to me, it, you don't have to be of the same race, ethnicity for you to, to, to make an impact in, in the community. If you have the heart for it, you just go and, and you do it. But I'm sure. Many people appreciate appreciate the way that you went about starting the Utah Islanders. So, what what what? Who are you targeting? Is it high school students or college students? So, right now, because of you, I'm sure everybody's heard of the NIL, the transfer portal, and stuff. That has just really now now with those two things, the transfer portal and NIL. Now, college football is the biggest uh, business in America. There's no question. There's not another business that's close to it. But the 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 part that hurts is these young kids that are trying to get in. You know, we I see a lot of talented athletes that are now getting overlooked because now they're trying to pull somebody that went to a different school that's entering the portal, and it's just really affecting the game of football right now. And you know, there's a part of me that understands what these kids are going through from my days and the things that I went through as an athlete. And 
and I, I, I can't sit back and watch it happen anymore. I have to, you know, I, the kind of person, if I see something I don't like, I'm going to get involved and I'm going to go fight for it. And when I started finding out that we could go out there and play junior colleges and D3 schools without actually having to require our players to go to school, I knew now what we could do is go there and pursue kids that are overlooked or that don't get the offer that they want. Because a lot of athletes, they take really poor offers across the country. And now you're away from your family. You're away from these things. Your parents are probably even paying for you to go to school. And I don't know if that's the best chance for success. You know, then, so we look for kids that don't have offers that they love. We have kids that don't, they, they excel in the football field, but they don't have the grades. And I don't believe that because high school stops that we should stop being able to watch you play football. We have some great players on this team that just don't want to go to school. And the world deserves to watch them to play football more. And I believe that the game of football still has more to teach them. And then we have kids that are also in the transfer portal where they're getting lost. Um, right now, we had a call with three players that have just been lost in the transfer portal and they have nowhere to go now. And so what we're doing is we're building a team with all of those guys. We're learning what we're learning what they what their goals are. And then we are those ones that want to go to D1. We know how to build around them. We've uh, we've partnered with All Poly to be able to help us with the education side. So those kids that want to go to school um, to help them get to school, and then the ones that are still fighting through things, um, we're adjusting to be able to make that thing happen for them. No, I'm I'm sure that you've done your research already. Are there any similar organizations like yours? And if there are, uh, what makes your program unique? Well, there's nothing out there that's doing it the way that we are. And I think it's because we've just put such an emphasis on education that you have to involve education in the game of football. And I just don't believe that's right. I am I believe that you need to learn. I believe in education. I just don't know if I necessarily believe in the education system where we have to go to school to continue to play football. That's That's absolute nonsense to me. And that's what everybody else is still doing. And I'm saying, look, we don't have to go that route. If a kid wants to be able to go to school, we're going to provide that platform. If they just still want to continue to play ball, we're going to provide that for them. But if I can get the best players in the state, which we only will have, our team will be comprised, we have to have 85% of our roster from the state of Utah or Pacific Islanders. So those are our criteria. That's a criteria that I set because we want to advance the game of football for the state of Utah. And, you know, I say all the time, like, nobody cares about Danny from Dallas. They care about Billy from Bountiful. And if we can help advance Utah athletes, then we're going to get the support we need from, you know, fans in the community. But there is nobody doing it because they, they're always tying education to it. And so I think that's one of the things that gives us, you know, which, it, and I believe that this is the future of football. You know, when, when I look at the landscape of things, I don't believe that the UFL will be around very much longer because you only have so much loyalty as a person to a sport or a program, right? So everybody has their NFL team. Then you're going to have your favorite college team. You might have two favorite colleges because you got a kid that maybe goes to one or the other, um, or you went to one and your wife went to one, whatever. But there's no more loyalty really left. And that's why I, and then with the money in college football, and that's why I don't believe the USFL or any of these other pro leagues have made it. The only loyalty that is available and that is left is the, is the loyalty to your children. And I believe that's where we are going to be different than what everybody else thinks, because we still want to watch our children play. We have, you know, there's parents out there that want to continue to watch their kids play. They're not done watching them play. And right now, we're telling them that they can't play anymore because they don't want to go learn more math. Yeah, that's amazing that you've made an alternate route for for these athletes to take if they don't want to uh, pursue an educational route. Um, but what are some of the some of the biggest challenges that you faced so far um, ever since founding this program? Well, I've been an entrepreneur my, my whole life. All I've done is build businesses from scratch. So really, this is no different than anything I've ever done. The Nobody believes in you until you're successful. Nobody wants to be a part of the growth part of it. They want to be a part of the success story. And 
you know, if this was my first time, I'd be, I'd be demoralized, but this is just something I've done five or six times now. And I'm used to it. I'm just used to people not believing. And, and I know that in order to get people to believe, I have to spend a great deal of my own money to be able to make that thing happen. Because once I can prove that it can be successful, then it will be. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to have a great head coach, Coach Easy. Um, and then we just brought on our OC, Devin Mahana. He played at BYU and played with the Redskins. Um, but right now I'm able to start getting people to believe without seeing the results. And, you know, that's what we got to do. And I just, I tell my guys, I'm like, look, I need some people to believe blindly in what we're doing here. And if we could all just do what we know we're capable of, this thing is going to work and it will be successful. I, I think that's always the toughest part is, you know, you think that you've got it, but then people, you know, because everybody wants to make top dollar. They want to go out there and they're, they're thinking about the money. And I got to get people to stop thinking about the money, thinking about what we can do here, what the purpose is and what we're, what we're doing here. And the, and the whole purpose here is to build something bigger than us eventually and we're on our path. We're getting it. And, you know, it's it's going to be a lot of having conversations with guys like you being able to, you know, invest back in our community. One of the things that we're going to do, what we're doing with our program is right now I'm, I'm working it out to where we're going to open up 20 percent of the team that can be owned by the community. So it's one way to help fundraise, but it's another way to be able to help show the community that this isn't my football team. This is I'm just the one that is going to help get it to where it needs to go. But that way the community can have an ownership of the team. And then we're also going to have uh, an advisory board built of uh, mostly Pacific Islanders with other uh, people in there to help to have strong ties to the football and, you know, the community or, and, and just strong ties to Utah um, to be able to help drive the program forward. Because I don't want to sit there and be the one, Hey, we should have, fire guy, you know, we should have fire dancers in this. This isn't, you know, this isn't my culture. I don't want to come in here thinking that's it. So that's why the advisory board is so important to us to be able to have them help guide the direction and what they want their how they want to be represented. You mentioned a community. I'm sure that a lot of people, once you put it out there, would love to be involved in your program, but what kind of community support do you need for your program to, to start thriving? Well, I think, I think the big thing for us is, you know, football and sports is something that provides opportunities all over, right? It's, it can change a community in many financially. It could give a sense of pride. It can do all sorts of things. And, you know, right now, I think one of the bigger things is, is that we need people to know about us. We need to know, they need to know what our purpose is and in any way that they can get involved. You know, we also want to use this platform to help bring attention to businesses that are owned by Pacific Islanders, right? Like, you know, that's one of the things that I'm finding in this is that there's, I want to say this the proper way, you know, it, the Pacific Pacific Islander culture puts just a lot of family first over, over making money. Right. And that is good to a sense. However, we still need to make money because if we can make money, we can then dedicate ourselves to what it is that we want to do. And what I want to be able to do is be able to use this platform to show like, Hey, like I want to provide you a way to be able to make money, to bring attention to the business that you have to, you know, the things that we need is a program to be able to give that business back to and, and try to feed family first. That's one of the things that we that I really stress immensely is that we we feed family first before anybody. And we do that through business and we do that through really just letting people know it's OK to make money. Right. Like and that's what I think that that's important to be able to let, you know, so when we're getting involved in the community and stuff and we're, we're reaching out to companies and stuff, part of it's about to be able to get them to support us financially a little bit through the, the thing. But it's also for us to be able to use this platform and use the things that we need to build this platform to, to, to give that business back. Are you a veteran, military member, law enforcement officer, hospital worker, or educator dreaming of owning your own home? 
Frontline Heroes is here to make that dream a reality. Their program is designed by a group of realtors, lenders, and escrow specialists who want to give back to those who served our communities. Here's how it works. Their realtors pledge to contribute 25% of their commission, while lenders chip in half a percentage towards closing costs and other fees associated with buying a house. It's their way of honoring your service and making home ownership more attainable. Contact Dan Taylor at 801-512-4200 to learn more and take the first step towards owning your own home. Frontline heroes, turning dreams into keys. Now, if I was an athlete, how would how would I come about um, contacting you if I'm interested in the program? So we have a bigger Instagram following. Um, we are also on Twitter, but we have a player application on utahislanders.com, um, a website we're totally we're rebuilding right now. But that's how you would be able to go in there, fill out a player application, and then one of our coaching staff will um, get back and get you in. But right now we are, you know, we are looking at bringing on a full-time recruiter that will, um, he's a Pacific Islander as well, um, to be able to go out there and, and get involved. Um, the biggest thing that we've got to do is just be involved in the community if and, and being involved in the youth. We have to build this program in a way that that little kids want to grow up to be Utah Islanders. And, and that means that we have to be heavily involved in the community. That means we have to be heavily involved in the sports that they are conducting. So, you know, they're going to know about us soon. But for the people who don't know about us right yet, um, that's going to be going to our website or going to our Instagram. Now, what as- aspects of, of your role, especially as, as the founder of the Utah Islanders, what do you enjoy in your role? Man, I love, I love proving people wrong. I love people telling me that this can't be done. And I love, I, I love the process. I'm in love with the process every single day. And, you know, in business, you know, I set kind of little, I set goals out. And really, once I achieve those goals, I kind of lose interest in it. When I, my last business, I gave away actually a successful business to somebody um, because I wanted to pursue a business where I was like, I want to sell a product all over the world. And once I started selling products all over the world, I lost kind of interest because that was my thing. I don't, I'm not motivated by the money. I'm not motivated by those things. I'm motivated by the process. And I think it's one of the things that kind of affect me a little bit because I don't really ever finish things all the way. Right. I always kind of, once I get to the point where I felt like I accomplished what I wanted to, then, then I, I kind of lose interest. But the thing that really drives me about the game of football is that it's always going to be that constant revolving. You got to rebuild. You got to overcome adversity. You got to be able to, you know, have advanced people and you've got to have people that get in trouble. You've got, you, there's so many different variations that keep, they got to keep you going and you want to build a winner. You want to go out there and you want to dominate teams on the football field and build a program that other, you know, programs look up to. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what I love. I love that more than anything. And then when we do it, you know, there's a lot of people that I'm going to sit back and look at and be like, told you. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Now, I'd like to give the time to our guests to, to kind of ask us behind the Love Lover questions. Do you have any questions for us? Oh, yeah, um, of course. You know, well, what gives what what is it that gets you behind that mic? And, and why, are, why are you interested in, you know, learning about other people? So it's funny when when we first started it, it behind a lava lava kind of started off in a gaming lobby me and a group of close friends we were playing call of duty and i pitched the idea to them to start a podcast and they just jumped on on board and we started a podcast it was about eight of us and slowly the numbers decreased and now there's an actual four full-time cast members of behind the lava lava so what started us was mainly men's mental health you know i I started off in a in a one of the darkest period in my life where i was going through a lot of depression you know suicidal ideation and that that basically you know it, it kind of planted a seed right there where i wanted to talk about topics that a lot of people could relate to, especially our Pacific Islander communities. 
why I wanted to continue this is mainly because it, for me personally, it's, it's therapy. Instead of going to the VA counselors or therapists, I'm doing this every week, talking to people, getting to know them, mainly because a lot of us were the same, but each of us have unique stories to tell. And I want to let the world know that people exist. There's always someone that could relate to whatever problem that you're going to. I also want to give people flowers because we started off with kind of all over the place and I kind of narrowed it down to, to veterans, the people and culture of the Pacific and small businesses. Those are the three things that we want to highlight and focus on in, in our podcast because we are that we are veterans. We're Pacific Islanders. We know the culture and we're also entrepreneurs. We're small businesses. So uh, with our experience, we can match the experience of other people, especially you, because we understand some of the, 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 the things that you're going through. So that's why I want to keep this going. It's mainly because of legacy. I want to leave a legacy. The same as, as you want to leave a legacy with Utah Islanders. So that's uh, the main reason. Well, would you be interested in doing a, a mental health themed game with us? Yes. Um, we just started a, a non profit. We call it the behind the lava lava foundation. And one of our goals is to, to actually collaborate with other organizations, especially, if, especially if you have veterans and, and their families in your organizations, we want to, Collaborate, and once we raise that funds, we want to grant athletic scholarships. We want to grant, just give out grants to 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 those who need assistance, especially programs like yours. So we definitely want to partner in the future. But first, we gotta. It just started. We just started the the foundation like like a few months ago. But we want to grow that funds to get to to where we want to say, hey, we want to donate to to the community uh, because I started a nonprofit because we hold we actually host the annual Pacific Island uh, Veterans Day dinner and that's free to all veterans in their plus one and we kind of bring a lot of sponsors to support this event so that's definitely something that well your program is definitely something that we want to be part of in the future mental Mental health is something that's close to me. I haven't personally experienced it, but someone very close to me um, does, and it's and it's so unexplainable. But it's something that you know that they, you know that you can only imagine how much difficult it would be to have so much self doubt, you know, and especially if somebody like me who has all the confidence in the world, you know, and this, you know, and to be able to under, you know, to be able to understand that and you know last year it was one of the things we were trying to do with Holinsky hope was i wanted to bring attention to, to to mental health because it is something close to me and anytime that we have the opportunity to be able to have a platform to help bring awareness to that especially on the men's side you know because when it comes to men we're so prideful and we never want to let anybody know that we're having a tough day and we wear you know we 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 hold things tight to us and you know, and just like you were saying, it's very, very important to be able to communicate because, you know, you know, I, I didn't know, I've never been officially diagnosed, but there's always been something different about me. And when my wife was doing some tests, she's like, I think you need to look at ADHD. I think you might have that. And, you know, when I was able to, to actually YouTube it and start understanding a little bit of what, what it was, I was able to go, Oh, finally, somebody understands what I'm going through. Somebody understands the fireworks and the, the, the constant just explosion of ideas that I have because I, I cannot, I do not know what quiet is. And when I started relaying those things to my fireworks of ideas, I then started saying, Oh, this is what mental health is because those are fireworks of the bad ideas that are affecting people. And, you know, and so. It's very important to me, um, and I would love to be able to work together with you to be able to have a game that we can 
bring awareness to this and help raise money for your fund um, and, and help bring awareness to what it is that you're doing. That's, that's, and you know, something very important to me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if you've heard of the I Love You Bro project. This guy named Joe Tuyaana, he saved uh, a man from jumping over the the bridge uh, onto the freeway on the I-15. So he started this uh, men's support group called the I Love You Bro Project, and they meet every week down in Utah County. I think it's West Jordan and Provo. But that's another organization that's for men's mental health so i think i think in the future we can get together a lot of these pacific islander uh, mental health uh, organizations especially like robert's place and actually hold an event with utah islanders so it to me it's not really about funding my own organization i just want to be involved in a community that's why i do the things that i do because i'm passionate about helping people you know our podcast we we do things freely we lend a hand if we're able to so it's not always about money but it's it's about supporting our community because um you know we just love our community so oh uh, one million percent and you know the other thing too is that you know money can help and so you know, there's ways that we can go about things, you know, to be able to help that cause. And, you know, my whole purpose with this football team is that once I build this program to way that I want it to be, you know, it, when it's, when I'm done with it, I'm actually, I'm going to take the team and I'm going to give it to the community in exchange for the name of a football field, because, you know, that's, you know, you know, when we, you know, after we, after we did this, we, uh, after I kind of named the Islanders and everything, I took one of our players via and I took him and his wife to Hawaii so we could go to the, uh, the PCC so we could go and, you know, I wanted to be able to learn a little bit about it. And I'll tell you what, even though the names are still tough for me to get, it's a little bit easier to understand when you find out that there's only tw 12 letters in the Hawaiian and six letters in the Samoan alphabet. And so, you know, you're like, okay, well that makes a little bit more sense. Cause I'm like, where are all these I's and A's coming from? But you know, that was something that, you know, and then we ended up going to the Polynesian Bowl because I, I really wanted to, to I, I want to dive heavy into understanding everything. And, and when we were out there, you know, we were hearing stories about, you know, men that would just walk out into the ocean, you know, so that way, and then they would basically commit suicide by, you know, just they would leave all their stuff on the beach and then go out and walk into the ocean. And that was just, man, that was that kind of, you know, when you're sitting out there on the beach now, you're like, now it's a different, it's kind of a different feel for me ever since I heard that, you know, and then, you know, to be going around there and to be able to see these statues and stuff and everything, I was like, I want a statue, uh, you know? And so, you know, that's what we're working for. You know, we want to be able to, you know, me and my wife, we don't know if we're going to have kids. Thank, you know, I thank God every day that I get 60 of them that I get to, you know, that I get to put up with every single time because I get to love them and I get to spank them, you know, like, you know, these, I get to live through these kids again. And these kids are my kids. They make me mad. They make me happy. They, I feel every emotion with them. And I, and I get to feel a lot of pride when they, when they, when they get to do things that they didn't know that they could do before. So, you know, that's, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a fun part of what that is. Well, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on board behind the Love Lava and chop it up uh, with me and tell your story and and tell the people about the Utah Islanders. Do you have any closing remarks or any shout outs? Oh, man. You know, my coach, Easy, he is absolutely a big part of why we're able to do this thing. You know, he was one of the first people to believe blindly in what it is that we do. Our new OC, Devin Mahina. You know, he's, he, he's believing blindly in what we do. And, you know, we've been really getting a lot of support from all of Polly and, um, you know, and I think that my wife, you know, I, there, if there's one person in the world that, uh, just, she lets me do whatever I want, man. And when I was like, Hey, we should get into football and we should do this and do this, you know, she's been there every step of the way and the team calls her mama and, 
you know, they love her to death, but you know, I'm really just super excited about being able to make this list of thank yous so long because of, you know, people like you giving me the opportunity to be able to talk about what it is that we're doing and to, you know, and to really do something I believe is special. You know, one of the things that I've, we're also going to be doing with this program is, you know, along the way, you know, because people keep bringing up education into what it is that we need to do. And again, like we were saying, we're not, I don't believe in the current education of what that is, um, going and getting your four year degree. So one of the things that we're going to do, we're going to start a business school for our athletes that I'm going to teach. And we're going to teach them the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial side. And this is another thing about getting involved in the community. But one of the things that we're going to do is for the first phase of the course, we're really going to ask our athletes rather than teaching them and make them learn about things and read things. We're going to develop this curriculum off of what they enjoy, how they think, what they feel about things. And we're going to, we're going to teach them how much it sucks to be an entrepreneur and how the hardest things you've ever done in your life are what you're going to go through every single day. And throughout those first, um, few weeks, we're going to teach that. Then the second course is going to be figuring out what businesses that they're interested in starting. We're going to find out what they want to do. If it's a, if it's a business that is a product or if it's a business that solves problems, we're going to figure out what that is. And we're going to develop a business plan out of that. And then the next phase of that is that we're going to invest in that business and we're going to help um, get that business started off the ground and help nurture that business with our players. And what we're going to evaluate our comp or our program off of is how many kids we get to D1 and how many businesses we start with our players and how much revenue those things are generating. And so when it comes to that, you know, that's where, you know, we want to meet more people in the community because if there is a lawyer and he's a Pacific Islander, we want to be able to bring that to that, to that person. And I think that's one of the things that, um, you know, I think that along the way, we're going to need people to help make this curriculum the way that it is. And I think that's where I'm going to give a lot more thank yous to, because that's thank going to be the fun part. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for your, your ventures and where you're going, the direction that you're going to take Utah Islanders. So I think it's a good thing for, for our community. So I'm glad that you have taken on this venture and, you know, to help our Pacific Island community, especially the athletes, because we need it. So we really appreciate it. But to our listeners, make sure you go follow Utah Islanders on their social medias. Uh, check out utahislanders.com and yeah, go support Chris on, on his, on his journey with the, the Utah Islanders program. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of Behind the Lava Lava. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to follow our platform, drop a comment and leave us, leave us a review. This is Michael Tan signing off. Tofa Soifua. Working on my interests, it's who I am. I'm trying to make these digits look like EINs. When the help ain't free, you all help me. Salute to folks who turn their names to LLCs. The wealth is in itself to help a non-profit right, To be better man. women or better men Whether business by veterans or common folks with a dream. a dream We're all born with the same strength We tread waters and we're untouched Let's be on the same wavelength Behind the lava lava front of our eyes Let our legacy live off it when we're up in the sky All signs point to us to help someone make a difference With God is my witness, let's talk business